Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We're excited to have you all with us today, and I'll just give a few seconds for people to, to join. I see a lot of people are hopping on right now. Um, I'll just start by introducing myself. My name is Hannah Gilkinson, and I have been a program director here at Putney Student Travel for 15 years. And during that time, I've coordinated our pre-college programs in Spain and England and in Italy, as well as here in the United States. So I I'm very much love the pre-college programs and, and so excited to talk about them today. Um, and I've also been a hiring director for all of our pre-college programs, which means that I get to spend time getting to know all of the fantastic and inspiring staff and faculty who join these programs. So we're excited to introduce some of them today and um, talk a little bit about our program in Tuscany. So for the next half an hour or so, we'll be sharing information about our pre-college program in Tuscany based in Siena. And I'll be joined by my colleague, Ansley Rubenstein, as well as Kiki Baxter. And then we'll be joined by Luca Batone, who teaches the Italian language seminar on our Tuscany program. And we're very excited to welcome one of our alumni as well, C.C. Allen Tuck, who joined us in Tuscany last year and who studied Italian with Luca while she was there. So hearing from our faculty and alumni is always a great way to get to know these programs. Throughout the webinar and at the end, we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. So definitely please feel free to put those in the Q&A box that's down at the bottom of your screen. And we might answer them um, live uh, at the end, or maybe we'll answer them in the moment. But please, any questions that come up, please do put them in there. And also know that at the end of this, we'll uh, send it out a recording of the webinar in case you want to share it with everyone um, that you know, or anyone you know, or those who couldn't make it today. So before we learn about our Tuscany program, I'd like to dive in and briefly share a bit about Putney Student Travel, who we are as an organization, and what we think sets these programs apart. So first and foremost, we are a family-run organization, which truly shapes the way that we operate. And we're a team made up of incredible bilingual, multilingual world travelers, people who have studied abroad and you know, worked around the world. And we're passionate about what we do, creating these educational learning opportunities for students. And we always are finding new ways to immerse ourselves in the places we go in meaningful ways. We care really deeply about creating opportunities for our students to learn and to grow and to collaborate and embrace the new on our safe and structured programs. We're in our 30, 73rd year of, of these educational programs abroad and um, we're really excited to continue in this next summer to create opportunities for deep and meaningful cross-cultural exchange in a supportive and inclusive environment. So while we do have a plethora of thematic programs and you can see them all on our website, today we are gonna to highlight specifically our pre-college category and focus on our Tuscany program. So we're gonna jump in now to give a general sense of the pre-college programs. So our pre-college programs offer students a unique way to learn while immersing themselves in a place, using the streets of, of the city, the resources of that destination to deepen their understanding of the topics that they're studying. For summer 2024, our pre-college programs are in Tuscany, Barcelona and Tokyo. On our pre-college program, students choose a seminar that will be their lens through which they explore the destination. And the learning on these programs is engaging. It involves discussions, immersive workshops, field visits. There's no tests, there's no grades, there's no homework. And the hope is to really embrace learning without those pressures and really have fun connecting with your peers and with the people that we meet along the way. So the seminar is designed to really get students out into the city, meeting with local farmers, if you're in the farm to table seminar, meeting with artists, with cooks and academics all throughout. The programs are also based in locations that are popular for study abroad programs. So for students who are thinking about what it might be like to study abroad, this is a glimpse of what it might look like if they were to choose to do so once they get to college. On the Tuscany program, we collaborate with the University of Siena so that students can utilize the classrooms and the university spaces that are there and get to know a little bit about college life in Italy, including the process of applying and studying abroad there. So that's just a little bit of background on our pre-college programs, and I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Ansley now, who's going to talk more about the program in Tuscany and the structure. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks for that introduction. Um, as Hannah mentioned, uh, I'll just briefly introduce myself to start. My name is Ansley Rubenstein, and I'm also a program director here at Putney. Um, this year, I'm specifically coordinating this pre-college Tuscany program, as well as our Oxford Academia programs that are hosted at the American University of Paris and at Yale University. Um, our pre-college pro program in Tuscany is based in Siena, which is just a wonderful place to have as our home base in this region. 
um, both to experience Italian life and to explore these different seminar topics. Uh, for those of you who are not as familiar with Siena, it's this beautiful Gothic city, it has a rich history, it's home to a wealth of architectural treasures, art, museums, and of course, it's also the setting for this famous horse race, um, which is called Il Palio. It happens every summer. Um, Siena is just a great jumping off point as well to several nearby sites and cities, including Florence. Um, and a big part of this program this year is going to be able to get out into the region more as a whole. So as part of that, there's going to be two scheduled day trips to Florence which the entire group will join on and that's going to give them plenty of time to explore Florence as part of their seminar as well as a little bit more independently. So for example last year um, the farm to table seminar spent one of the afternoons in Florence in Mercato Centrale which is this amazing marketplace um, and food hall um, or the business banking and markets group, they met with different artisans um, and learned how different local creatives have been building their businesses around their art forms and how this is part of the larger business landscape in Tuscany. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to get out and immerse themselves in Florence too in these different seminars. Um, in terms of the overall structure some more, there are no classes on the weekends. So students are gonna have the chance to um, take a day trip to the Etruscan coast on one of the weekend days, um, specifically to Castiglione della Pescaia, which is a beautiful beach area. Um, and that's a really lovely day uh, to swim and spend time relaxing separate from the normal week of their classes. Um, there's also going to be local trips to other small towns in the region. So uh, maybe a small group might go to Pienza, which is this beautiful little town that's actually the home of Pecorino cheese, um, or to uh, Monteregioni, which is uh, this walled town that has these medieval fortifications up on a hill. You get this beautiful view of the countryside. Um, and then at the end of the program, the whole group is also going to be heading to Rome for a couple of days. So there's a chance to really, um, you know, explore Rome, uh, see some additional sites, uh, perhaps go on a bike tour of the city or do something like that, um, and really celebrate the end of the program overall um, and all together. So that's kind of what the structure is going to look like as a whole. Um, but what I want to do now is talk a little bit more about what a, a day in the life on this, of this program might look like. Um, and as I mentioned, we're based in Siena and our accommodations are this fa small family run hotel that's right in the center of the city. And our program takes over that hotel for the, um, for the duration of the program. So we get our exclusive use of that. Um, and again, it's based right in the middle of the city, which is amazing. Um, so just as they would, you know, students would if they're, you know, in college or, or, you know, university, they're expected to have this to kind of manage themselves from day to day and participate fully in these these amazing activities every day. So they get themselves up, they get ready, breakfast is had at the hotel. And then after breakfast around nine, uh, they will have their first meeting of the day with their seminar group. Um, so you know, when I say seminar, that sometimes thinks, oh, I'm going to be in a classroom, but that's actually not necessarily true at all. Um, as Hannah mentioned, we do use the University of Siena um, classrooms and spaces there, but, you know, because we're so focused on experiential learning, this seminar might, you know, meet in a cafe, or they might meet on the steps outside of the Piazza del Campo, or maybe that morning they're actually going to take a bus and go to the outskirts of the city, um, and go to an olive oil farm uh, if they're in the farm to table seminar, for example. So after the morning seminar block, um, you'll see at noon there's a break for lunch. Um, and that's, you know, the lunch uh, is done by the students independently in small groups of three. So they could, you know, grab some supplies from a market and have a picnic in a park or they'll um, there's so many different little cafes and things like that in the city where they can grab a sandwich or something like that and uh, have a little bit of um, downtime over lunch together. 
And then after lunch, um, you know, the students meet back up in their seminars and that's another time for going on excursions or getting out into the city. So maybe they'll go to the Confada Museum or the Jewish History Museum. Um, our instructors take them to places that are all very local and tied directly to their different seminar topics. Um, and either before or after dinner, so after that afternoon seminar block, um, the group has a chance to kind of uh, meet together and, and have a group meeting. And that can either happen as a whole program or in smaller residential life groups. And we really value these community meetings because it's a chance to come together and really intentionally build our small academic community, um, which is something that's so unique to our programs. Um, we really do that in an intentional way. Uh, we check in with our students, maybe, uh, you know, play a quick game to recap the day or share our experiences, um, something fun and interactive and, and also reflective so that the students have a chance to really, you know, process everything that they're doing each day and also share and exchange what they've, they've done with each other. So, you know, somebody in the Italian language group um, can, can ex share their experiences with somebody in the um, market seminar. Um, and really be able to kind of share their different perspectives and, and, and experiences. And so those community meetings, a lot of times it happens on this amazing grassy area that's uh, overlooking the entire city. You have these incredible views that, you know, you see in these photos. Um, and it's just a great space to kind of come together and, 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 and have this meeting. Um, for dinners, uh, we either have them out in Siena. So we might go to restaurants and small groups or say we're in Florence for that day, we'd, we'd stay in Florence and have dinner in small groups um, out in the city. But also sometimes when we're in Siena, we have them at the University of Siena canteen. Um, and so that dining hall is this beautiful, very classic uh, building and they have the traditional kind of, uh, you know, variety of, of different meals that students can choose between salads, pizza, desserts, things like that. Um, so they'll get a taste of the University of Siena college life as well. Um, so I'll talk now a little bit more about what the seminar choices are, um, because such a major component of this program are the seminars. And so students choose one of these seminars, and that is their, their lens that they, that they bring um, and that they, they're going to be exploring Santa through, and also the, the surrounding Tuscan countryside. So the seminars as a whole, you know, across the board, no matter which one they choose, really focus on experiential learning. Um, and they're intentionally designed to, to get out of the classroom, deviate from the sort of classroom centered or text heavy learning that, you know, many of our students are used to in their normal academic lives. And here we really want students to, to get out and to learn by doing. And so, you know, maybe in that morning seminar, uh, your instructor will begin with a discussion, like I said, in a cafe or something that frames certain concepts or identifies different key issues um, for that day. And then they'll be able to take that learning beyond the classroom and go on site visits or meet with local experts, or maybe they'll have a guest lecturer who comes in that day, um, go on a field trip, something like that. Uh, as part of the seminar, students also have a chance to work on an independent project, which really enables them to incorporate all of their experiences and all of their learning into a project that is, is driven by that student's specific interests um, within that topic or within that seminar. So with the guidance of their seminar instructor, the student will have a chance to work on that throughout the program. And then at the end, they'll be able to share it um, as a whole with the rest of their um, peers and their instructor. And it's really a wonderful way to celebrate everyone's interests and learning from the program, to incorporate the different things that they've experienced, as well as to really focus on something that, you know, that, that, that motivates them, that is, is passionate, you know, that is one of their passions. So um, the, the personal project is a really, really valuable part of the seminar as well. Um, so I'll talk just very, very briefly about each of these seminars to give you a sense of what they are. And then as Hannah mentioned, we have our instructor from our Italian language class. So I'm going to save that one for the end and um, let him speak a little bit more about that. Um, the first seminar is the business banking and market seminar. And this really gets into the pract practical aspects of business. Um, they talk about management, finance, marketing, um, public relations. There's also a chance to 
look at sort of the macro level, exploring sort of topics of finance, um, trade, investment. Uh, a highlight in the past for the students of this seminar has been the chance for them to learn about the history and the impact of the Medici family dynasty. Um, and then as part of that, they spend the afternoon on a private tour of the Medici Museum, which is in Florence. In our drawing and sketching seminar, um, students really have the chance to take inspiration from all of their surroundings and build a, a portfolio. So, you know, they might spend an afternoon at the Pinoteca Nazionale di Siena or um, the museum complex of Santa Maria della Scala. Um, and these are all really inspiring locations. Um, we often get a question about, you know, how much experience do I have to have to come on, uh, you know, to, to, to enroll in this, in this seminar? And we really say that, you know, students enter with really varying levels of experience. Um, obviously, we, we, we want them to be motivated to learn about drawing and sketching and to expand their skills. Um, but really our instructor accommodates a number of different levels and can, can teach to, the, to those different levels. Um, and it's really amazing that, to see what the students produce. They, they get to share this as, fine of, as part of the final evening showcase or celebration um, when other students are also sharing their final projects. Um, in the farm to table seminar, um, this is a chance to, you know, examine the food systems in Italy um, and in the, in the Tuscan countryside specifically. They'll meet with local farmers, uh, producers. Um, they'll have a chance to understand sort of the way that agribusiness business works here um, and sort of see this amazing synergy that happens in this region between land and food and economic livelihood. Um, they have the chance to cook for themselves, and uh, some of the past projects of this have been, um, say, uh, making a cookbook or coming up with some different recipes. Um, and actually, last year, a couple of the students actually put together sort of a pseudo cooking show um, and, and, and filmed that as a video for their final project. Um, in the history of art and architecture, um, our instructor for this seminar is David Walthall, who's the professor at the University of Siena, and he's lived in Siena for many years, and he's been teaching this um, seminar for, for a, a while and just loves, loves sharing his passion with the students. Um, you know, they talk about classical influences, medieval spiritualism, Renaissance humanism, they really get into the, the, the depths there and you know, David has this amazing way of using the city as a classroom. So whether it's taking them to an art gallery or a museum or just walking around, he's, he's really able to point out these incredible details everywhere that they go. Um, I'll jump to the photography seminar. Um, as I mentioned, Luca is going to talk about Italian language. So photography, I mean, there's just, again, so many ways to get creative here. Um, Students short shoot portraits. Um, you know, sometimes they practice with each other, or you know, there's different opportunities to interact with locals and ask permission to take photos of locals. Um, you know, as like a street fashion shoot or something like that. Uh, there's also amazing landscapes. Uh, so there's you know the Tuscan countryside, or to do abstract photography. Um, again, our instructors really help students find their niche and and, and work with them to to build their skills here. Um, and also create, you know, create a portfolio or add to their own. Um, so the final seminar is Italian language. Um, and I, as I mentioned, we're lucky enough to have our instructor, Luca, here, who's going to talk more about that. Um, but first, I want to turn it over to my colleague, Kiki Baxter, um, who was one of the in-country program directors on this program last summer. And she's going to speak a little bit more about our amazing pre-college faculty um, and introduce our special guests. So Kiki, I'll turn it over to you. Hi, thank you so much for the introduction. Hi, everybody. My name is Kiki. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining. If you're watching live right now, if you're watching this in the future on a recording, we're so happy that you're here. Um, I'm happy to be here this program. It was just a pleasure directing um, pre-college Tuscany last year personally. It was a highlight of my year um, and this particular event, this webinar, um, it's particularly special. It's kind of like a mini reunion of our program from last summer. Um, I'll soon introduce my colleague Luca, who's our Italian language seminar instructor and soon our alumni student, Cecilia Allen Tuck, 
Um, but before I get into that, our pre-college Tuscany faculty that you see right here, our instructors are amongst are almost exclusively residential to this program. They play both the role of the instructor and the overseers of the extracurricular activities and the group dynamics. And they're most often graduate students at US institutions or full-time teachers at US schools. So they're super familiar with the management of group dynamics with American teenagers. But on the pre-college Tuscany program, many of our returning instructors and staff are actually year-round residents of Siena. They're either professors or graduate students um, at the university in Siena. And here you can see some of their names and their titles. You can also go to our website where you can read more about our instructors, read their bios. Um, they've been working with us for several years. Many of them are returning instructors and they just love working with our students summer after summer. It's a pleasure to work with them um, in the field as well. Um, and pretty soon, uh, Luca and Cecilia will join us. Cece is, she's currently a senior in high school. She is an incredible athlete, runs track, and she's on her swim team as well. She is also a very talented singer and an actress. And I actually got to see her perform not uh, too long ago as the female lead in uh, the Percy Jackson musical at her school. Uh, this is why it's kind of a bonus to have alumni students who live close by. Um, it was such a pleasure having Cece on our program last year. She was such an enthusiastic student to have, both in Luca's Italian language seminar and just throughout the program overall, ray of sunshine. Um, she actually came into the program having a little bit of prior instruction on the Italian language and some experience speaking, but over the course of the few weeks, it really was just remarkable to see her speaking confidence and her skills just accelerate which I think is both a nod to Cece's motivation, how she took advantage of every opportunity, which is something we encourage all of our students on our pre-college programs to do, but also to Luca's super creative instructing abilities and support. He is just incredible. He's so much fun. Our students just adore him. Um, I was able to join several of Luca's seminars and our goal on our Putney pre-college programs is you know, going beyond the classroom and using the field for experiential learning, whether it's having a class in a cafe or on the steps just, out, just outside of the Piazza del Campo. Um, but for example, and I don't wanna to speak too much about his instruct, instruction, but there in Siena, there's this incredible outdoor farmer's market in Siena that they have a couple of days a week. And Luca brings his group there, or he brought, this past summer, he brought his group there for a morning lesson. They did a scavenger hunt activity where everyone was instructed to find objects that started with a particular letter. So they had to think about the vocabulary and interact with local merchants and um, each other. And I got to come along for the fun too. So it was just an amazing, super creative way to get to get them to interact and to to build confidence. I think they're just so used to you know. For a language and a language course, they're used to drilling vocab and drilling conjugations out of a textbook inside of a classroom, which is is great to lay the foundation for sure. But I think an opportunity like this is just really incredible and powerful. And as an instructor, it's amazing to watch this all unfold um, in just a few weeks. Um, so Luca, Cece, I'd love to have you turn your cameras on and um, join us. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for being here. First, um, Luca, I would love to have you just talk a little bit more about um, maybe just a short bio and to share a little bit about your experience working on our programs with our students and um, how you approach experiential learning. Well, Kiki, first of all, thank you so much for the, the great words, for the great introduction as well. And I want to, uh, I'm really glad to be here today and I want to, uh, I'd like to express my gratitude for taking the time to join us and being part of my of this moment. My name is Luca, uh, I'm from Naples. Uh, you might have heard of this city as the city of pizza or Pompeii, the Vesuvius. So it's a city in the southern part of the country, but I actually study in Tuscany uh, at the University of Foreigners of Siena the town in which I've had the unique opportunity of being the tutor of the Italian language and culture, a course offered by Putney for the, um, for the last two years. 
let's say that in the contemporary landscape, we are fully aware of the importance of learning, I don't know, a second, a, th a third, or even a fourth language, and, um, and how that has, uh, how this knowledge has a huge impact and positive impact on, uh, on the cognitive development of each and every single of us, but in this specific case of, of children, of your children, of students, take for instance, I don't know, the improvement in problem solving skills, the enhancement of our memory, uh, the, the intensification of our cognitive flexibility. And coupled with that, um, I would say that we are also very familiar with, with the growing demand of individuals with a plurilingual background. I'm purposely using the word plurilingual opposed to multilingual because if multilingual uh, tends to isolate the knowledge, the linguistic knowledge, different languages in separate chambers, Plurilingualism kinds of see the knowledge of languages uh, as a fluid and um, and um, a very fluid um, kind of knowledge that sees the language interconnecting and working towards a goal. Um, it seems to me that in this context, Italy plays uh, a very important, a key role. Uh, I don't know how many of you resort to Italian vocabulary when speaking, uh, when talking about music or the arts or food, fashion, literature, like all this. That's because Italian has been, let's say, the one of the languages of reference for all these fields. And, and I think that, that a practical exposure to, to this language uh, can definitely broaden your children's perspective. As for the Italian language in course, uh, I totally understand that a fortnight long course with a very uh, a varied class with students ranging from very beginners or whizzes like Cece, who is going to talk next, uh, might sound like a bit of a challenge, um, but I cannot expect your children to reach full proficiency in just a couple of weeks. So and that is the reason why in these cases, we focus on what the so-called, what I called partial skills, partial skills. Uh, my job is to foresee the context in um, which the students will have to use the language and give them the right and appropriate linguistic tools to face the challenge. Uh, my job is also to try and make them independent thanks to this partial skills uh, around which they then build up a whole network of, of further knowledge. Uh, while not forgetting roaming around the, the medieval narrow streets, alleys of Siena. Uh, to illustrate, in the past few programs, we have proposed a few activities, interesting activities, uh, such as cappuccino and gelato time at a cafe in Piazza del Campo, the piazza that Ansley was mentioning before, mentioned before. Um, in that case, the students could just sit, that, uh, sit down, had a conversation, and then had to had to deal with waiters with other customers uh, and that was held in the famous square where the the palio the, the horse race uh, takes place another interesting activity was picnic tra le regioni which is like a sort of picnic across regions which was held in collaboration with uh, my colleague and i could say definitely definitely say my best friend scott who takes care of the farm to table seminar uh, in that case, students were asked to uh, hunt for local produce different, from different regions, Italian regions, and then uh, bring everything back and have uh, a friendly picnic all together. Another activity uh, I, I'd love to mention is Una Mattina in Pinacoteca, so a day in the, in the art gallery. So in that case, students were first prepared with some vocabulary activities, preparation tasks, and then they were uh, just set free uh, in the museums and had to pick one of the pieces of art that they then had to describe. Uh, then we also went to Mundi Museum and also Dante's house just to have a sort of historical uh, approach to the language and uh, historical insight of the Italian language. Passeggiata al mercato, which is the, the activity Kiki uh, mentioned before, so they had to walk through the local market food and clothes market, it's very important, clothes market. Uh, and then they had to either, I don't know, get the product or photograph a product starting with a specific letter of sound. Uh, and I think one of the most appreciated activities was Parla Milite, which was uh, a sort of conversation club at a cafe with some of my local friends um, so that 
students uh, joining the program could also, uh, let's say, create some network long lasting friendships with local Italian uh, peers. All these activities I have mentioned had a specific goal, which is working on uh, partial skills. And these, uh, these skills are not only are these uh, skills uh, functional, but they also give an immediate and visible feedback to the students who grows, uh, who grow uh, more and more independent day by day. And also uh, this approach, I think that it respects and reinforces the plurilingualism of the students. What I mean is that often I get, uh, I have some students who speak Spanish, French, uh, I don't know, Russian as a second, third language. And I'm always uh, very joyful to see their uh, stereotype look uh, when they see, oh yeah, uh, I can recognize that word. I saw it in, uh, uh, in the shop sign and then I can use it in Italian or like this kind of situations, which, which I love. Uh, and to do so, we, all, we would uh, always meet early in the morning for some preparation tasks, sitting in a nice cafe, not just because I love cafe, it's, it's a plus for me, but it's also very enjoy enjoyable, uh, but because it represents a way to, let's say, establish an informal environment uh, where the students can feel at ease, thus maximizing the learning process. At a cafe, they have to deal with waiters, they have to, I don't know, talk to other uh, customers, they can also, I don't know, end up asking where the toilet is. And this is a sort of um, guided independence, unconscious learning after that out in the town to put all this into practice. Let's say that in a nutshell, I would say if, if the students decide to join the, the language, the Italian language course, they will get the chance to improve their linguistic skills for the stay and also for uh, possible future students studies in Italian like, like Sisi or receive cognitive benefits of language learning, foster their open-mindedness and uh, tolerance, as um, Europeans would say, uh, appreciate being united in diversity, and also sample excellent food, enjoy entertaining activities, all this while cooperating with an amazing, I must say an amazing and supportive team of experts in the field, and being completely, completely immersed in one of the most renowned and extraordinary uh, settings that CNI is. So um, thank you so much for your time and your attention. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to post them in the, in the chat. Thank you so much, Luca. That was fantastic. A lot of um, the activities, um, hands-on activities and immersive activities that Luca um, was mentioning just before are kind of illustrated here in some of the photos that you see and actually CC happens to be in in most of them you can see um, the two of them actually together on the bottom right taking a cooking class um, with the rest of our group and then down in the middle this was just out and about around town I forget the exact lesson that was um, taking place that day and but it's not uncommon for you know some of these lessons to take place uh, I mean it is extremely common it's it's what we encourage for our all of our classes to be kind of outside engage with the local community at a cafe or top left is um, on the steps just outside of our accommodation so so you can see a lot of happy enthusiastic faces there um, and even in these sort of unscripted moments, uh, there's still a lot of interaction and engagement and learning taking place. So that's just kind of what we call the Putney magic um, that takes place on our programs. Um, and Cece, uh, thank you for being here. I know this is a busy time of year. It's your senior year. There's so much going on with you personally and getting ready for school in the fall. Um, but just, I would love for you to just chat a little bit about what this experience meant to you or if there's any highlights or anything you want to share. I know you also attended a, a webinar just like this last year. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here. Um, I love the program so much. Um, when I got home and everybody was like, oh, how was it? How was it? The only word that I could really describe was magical. I felt like even that was an injustice to how like amazing and dare I say life-changing it was um it was the first time and longest time I had ever been away from home in general and alone 
And I had been really nervous to go to a foreign country alone, to go with people I had never met before, to be living in a room with people I had never met before, especially the summer before, or like the year before I would be applying to colleges. But immediately upon arrival, I just found that I was making so many friends, so many connections with people from around the country, and then so many connections with the staff themselves. Um, I studied Italian with Luca, um, and then I became very close with Kiki as well. And uh, I did, so I did come in with a background in Italian language. I'd been taking lessons, but there were a lot of people in my group who didn't have that background who hadn't studied it at all um there were some who family members had spoken it who um had lived there maybe for a few months when they were little so there was a lot of different um backgrounds with the language and then there were people who took Spanish or French as Luca was saying and all of us just came together and really worked and were motivated to learn and excited to learn and it um I think Kiki was saying this it's very uh, outside of like a classroom setting where you're you have to do homework or you have to study conjugations or something you you're really immersed in the experience which is why I wanted to go to this program in the first place um and uh I the so the picture in the middle on the bottom I do remember that uh task actually it was we had to go around and talk to locals and ask them in Italian and like explain to them what we were doing uh a certain clothing item they were wearing so it would be like oh uh what do you call this and then they would tell us like orakini for um for earrings and we would have to write it down and then bring it back to the group and we had like this battle of like who could get the most sticky notes on like the other person and and just activities like those really enhanced the experience and really like made you want to learn but also made you learn like I like orakini I probably wouldn't remember if I was just like looking at it on a vocab sheet but I was really like immersed in the experience and um we would go to cafes every day and order and have to like talk to locals um I think Luca talked about the picnic which was another one of my favorite activities and my partner and I actually made a connection with um a local shopkeeper because we brought um her pesto to the picnic and we won the like picnic or like our for our region and we brought her back the medal and then every time we went to get sandwiches there she would give us like a secret discount so it was like those little um interactions with locals that you don't really get just being on a trip with like your family or even by yourself you really have to be working on immersing yourself in the experience so I felt really lucky to have that opportunity and to use it as a way to foster my own passion for language learning and for connecting with people um, in kind of like the bigger world. I'm from a really small town. So I felt like being in that city, even though it's small, I was able to find a lot of things to do, find a lot of areas to grow. I came home and felt like I had more confidence in myself, more confidence in the language, more idea of where I wanted to go in life. Like now I'm applying to schools that I know have good international relations programs um, that I know I'll be able to study Italian and Spanish in and like study a lot of different languages. So I feel I feel really grateful for this opportunity to have gone here and been um, with these people. And even I got to spend time in some of the other lessons just um, like on like a field trip. And I know that the other um, the other teachers and the other uh, lessons are just equally as amazing and um, like immersive. Yeah. I'm like beaming with pride over here. It's interesting because as instructors, you know, sometimes you only get two, three weeks in a summer with your students, but to watch how the the seed gets planted and how things just progress over time and how a little bit of inspiration is is cultivated, it, it's just it it's super meaningful as um, you know an instructor, and it really um, it really helps explain the why, like why we come back year after year and, and what makes these programs just really wonderful experiences for, for us as well. Um, so thank you, Cece, for sharing. Um, would you be interested in telling us where you, what you plan to do uh, next year in the fall or what you're thinking about? Um, so I haven't committed to anything yet, but I am hoping to study Italian, Spanish, and international relations in the fall at um, a university. I, I'm not sure which one yet. 
<laughs> Stacey's gotten into some really wonderful schools uh, and we're excited to watch and see where she commits to. And we know it's gonna be an incredible experience um, for her. Um, my other question was, do you think this, uh, you know, pre-college study abroad program kind of checks off the box for global learning or did it help inspire and um, build out your bucket list a little bit? But I think we kind of answered that. I think your dreams and aspirations are, are growing and, and we love that and we encourage that. Thank you so much, Cece. Um, I guess at this point, I will pass it along to Hannah, pass it back to Hannah, who will talk a little bit more about um, just important things to know and how to apply to our programs. Sure, thank you. Um, I am definitely more excited about summer now. I love hearing from you know both our instructors, but also our alumni, and that was wonderful. So thank you both for you know sharing your perspective. Um, I'm just going to cover a few really important details that you should know when you're considering a, a Putney pre-college program. Uh, the first is just about travel, uh, how to get to and from the program. So once a student has been accepted on a pre-college program, we'll provide information about travel and, and flight logistics. Um, there is a flight from New York to Rome that we are happy to, to coordinate that with you. We do have families sometimes who want to travel independently in Italy or um, you know, travel as a family and meet us in Siena. We're also happy to accommodate if you wish to drop um, you know, your student off directly with the group in Siena. Um, so either one of those works, we're really happy to work with you um, on your travel plans to, to the best we can. Um, and this program does link up with other programs as well. So if you're interested in having a longer summer experience, definitely give us a call. We're happy to tell you which ones might work well for that. Um, the application process, it is, we try to keep it as simple as possible. It is completely online. If you are an alumni, meaning you've already joined us in the past, you can just log in using your past credentials. We have all of your information there. But if you're new to us, um, you just create a login and that becomes your your login that you have to access all the information you need for the summer. Um, to start, it starts the application first with some basic information about who you are, um, you know, your grade, your age. It will ask you then to put down a deposit once you've completed the basic information. The deposit is a $700 payment, which consists of a $200 application fee and a $500 tuition deposit. Once we have that, that holds space in the program, as well as your first choice of seminar, assuming there's still space in it, which there is space in all of the seminars at this time. Um, so that will hold space in the program and the seminar while you get the next pieces together. And what we're going to be asking you to do is to tell us a little bit about yourself. Write us a short personal statement, just a paragraph or so, not a no college essay level thing. We just want to know why you want to go on this program, what you're excited about. And that's really helpful for your instructor to get to know why you've chosen that seminar, why you're coming to Siena, so we can really anticipate what your curiosities are. Um, and then we also ask for two email addresses from educators. Uh, they could be teachers, they could be, you know, mentors, coaches, people that really know you working in with a group of peers and know you in that type of a situation. We don't ask for transcripts. Um, we really wanna know how you're going to engage with the community and make sure it's the right fit for everybody. So once we have those things in a signed agreement form, our admissions team will get back to you right away. And when you're, if, if you're accepted into the program, you have access to what's called the digital locker, which is your one-stop shop for the summer. You'll have your packing list in there, information on that travel flight that I mentioned, um, information about uh, you know your leaders, well, your summer program blog, all of that stuff will be in there. Um, so that's going to be a great resource for you as you prepare for the summer. So give us a call if you have any questions, but that is the application process. Um, and then we often have people who reach out to us and ask if we offer scholarships. We do have scholarships available through the Putney Open Door Fund. The Putney Open Door Fund is a nonprofit foundation whose purpose is to eliminate the barriers for young people seeking educational travel experiences. You can learn more about those scholarships, the eligibility and the application process on our website. It is different. So if you are interested in a scholarship, do not do the process that I just outlined, but go to the website and you'll see all the information there. Um, it, the deadline is February 15th for scholarship applications. So I would just be mindful of that um, if you're, that's something you're considering. So that is all I have for you today. Um, I hope that it has been very informative for everybody. It has been a pleasure to have everybody um, here today. And I, I think we answered all of our questions that came in during the course of the program, but John, speak up if I'm wrong. Um, and we'll be sending this out to everybody. So uh, 
please feel free to go back and watch any of it or share it out with anybody who you think might be a right fit for this program. And we'd love to talk to you if you have any questions. So never hesitate to give us a call. And again, thank you so much.